Welcome back to the Enlightening Books Podcast, your go-to source for discovering thought-provoking and illuminating reads. We explore books which inspire personal growth, challenge conventional wisdom, and expand the boundaries of human knowledge. Okay, you know those moments when you just like feel this deep connection with someone, like you're on the same wavelength, even if you're miles apart? Oh, absolutely. Like a sixth sense almost. Right. Well, get this, Erica Fargo. She wrote The Quantum Physics of Relationships. And she's basically saying those moments might uh, might have something to do with quantum physics. It's a pretty wild concept, right? Sounds crazy, but stick with me on this one. So we've got excerpts from the book itself, a blog post she wrote, even stuff from the Amazon page, the whole nine yards. A 360-degree view of the quantum love landscape. I like it. Exactly. And it's not like she's saying our relationships literally operate by quantum laws. It's more like... More like she's using those mind-bending physics concepts as metaphors, a new way to think about love. It's like using the universe's most complex rule book to, like, decode our messiest emotions, you know? Exactly. And, you know, metaphors can be powerful, especially with something as complex as human connection. It's a way to grasp those big, sometimes overwhelming ideas for sure so fargo starts off with this like really epic comparison talking about the vastness of the quantum realm those tiny particles we can barely get our heads around but they make up like everything and then she compares that to to the vastness of human emotion how we connect with each other yeah like all those intricate ways we form bonds and stuff pretty wild right it's a clever way to set the stage By drawing a parallel between this micro world of particles and, like you said, this macro world of relationships, it's like she's saying, hey, maybe there's more to this love thing than we realize. Okay, so she's got my attention. But how does she go from, like, subatomic particles to actual relationship advice? That's the leap I'm... uh... Well, she delves into how quantum physics really shook up our understanding of reality. Take superposition, for example. In the quantum world, a particle can be in multiple states at once until we observe it, and then it collapses into a single state. It's like that whole if a tree falls in the woods thing. Exactly. Now, we don't see our partners suddenly changing personalities depending on who's looking, but the concept of superposition gets us thinking. Like, how much do our expectations, our very act of observing, actually influence our partner's behavior? Oh, I've totally experienced that. Like, if I go into a conversation already expecting my partner to be in a bad mood, uh-huh. I swear, it's like they can sense it. And, and they kind of rise to the occasion. Yeah, it's the worst. That's the observer effect in action. It's not about some mystical force or anything, but rather that very human tendency. We see what we expect to see, right? right. We find evidence for the stories we tell ourselves. So it's like we're all amateur quantum physicists running experiments on our loved ones without even realizing it. Exactly. And the empowering thing is once we're aware of this observer effect, we can become more conscious, right? More intentional about what we're putting out there. So it's not just about predicting the future. It's about shaping it. Exactly. And Fargo, she even suggests keeping a journal, a perception shift journal, she calls it, to track how even small changes in your focus can shift the whole dynamic of a relationship. Okay, that's actually really cool. Like, instead of focusing on everything that's wrong, you actively look for the good? Precisely. You start retraining your brain to see things differently, and you might be surprised at the ripple effect it creates. Wow. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. We really might have more power to shape our relationships than we realize. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Fargo, she delves into so many more of these thought-provoking parallels. Okay, I'm hooked. What other mind-bending concepts is she connecting to love? Hit me. Well, one of the big ones, one that always gets people, it's entanglement. you got these two particles, right? right? And they're linked, but it's like not just a normal link. They could be galaxies apart. And still, whatever happens to one instantly affects the other one. Okay, hold up a sec. Now, that sounds like we're going full Star Wars here. Right. But seriously, how did that... uh... How do they even relate to couples? Are we saying people are literally quantumly entangled? Not literally. No, that'd be something, wouldn't it? But think about it this way. You ever just, like, know what your partner's feeling, even if they're miles away? Oh, like when you think of someone and they call that second spooky action at a distance, right? Exactly. Or those times you finish each other's sentences. It's like there's this invisible string between you connecting your emotional states. Kind of wild when you actually say it out loud. It is kind of wild. Yeah. So we're not saying it's actually quantum entanglement. Yeah. 
But by using that metaphor, it makes you appreciate those moments of connection even more. You know, I totally. It's like instead of just going, oh, that's weird. You stop and think, whoa, maybe there's something even deeper happening here. It gives you goosebumps. Right. Big time. So Fargo talks about this being especially helpful for people in long distance relationships, which makes sense. Because when you can't be physically together, you're really relying on those other levels of connection to, like, keep things strong. Exactly. And she even has this exercise in the book, the daily entanglement moment, she calls it. Okay. I'm not going to lie. That name is kind of awesome. <laughs> Do I need, like, a lab coat and goggles for this? No lab required for this one. It's actually really simple. The idea is that you and your partner, you choose a specific time every single day, doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing, to just stop for a few minutes and intentionally connect with each other. That's it. So even if you're like on opposite sides of the world, you're still taking that time to kind of like tune into each other. Exactly. Like a daily reminder that you're still connected, even across the distance. It could be a quick text, maybe a silent wish for their well-being, or even just visualizing your connection. Mm, that's actually really sweet. I love that. It's like this mini ritual you can do to keep that bond strong, even when you can't be physically together. Exactly. It's about consciously cultivating that entanglement. Okay, so we've talked about observing with intention. We've got this entanglement thing going on. What other quantum concepts did she... Uh... Well, she tackles a big one, that whole balance between intimacy and independence. You know, that classic relationship struggle. Oh, tell me about it. Too close and you feel suffocated. Too much distance and you start to drift apart. It's a delicate dance, right? Yeah. And she connects it to get ready for it. The uncertainty principle. Okay, refresh my memory on that one. That's the whole we can't know everything principle, yeah. You got it. You can know both the position and momentum of a particle with perfect accuracy. There's always going to be a little uncertainty. And Fargo, she's saying the same principle, it applies to relationships too. So like the more you try to pin down your partner, their every move, their constant attention, you end up stifling their own need for freedom and growth. Bingo. And the opposite is true too, right? Someone's always off on their own, always seeking that momentum. It can leave you feeling insecure, unsure about where you stand. Okay, when you put it like that, it's like, whoa. It's not about one person being right or wrong. It's just like this fundamental truth about relationships. There's always going to be a little bit of that push and pull. And maybe that's okay. Maybe that uncertainty, it's not something to be afraid of. It's just part of what makes relationships so dynamic, so alive. Just like the quantum world itself, right? Always in motion. This is blowing my mind. It's like she's giving us a whole new language to talk about love. Right. And sometimes having a new language, a new way to frame those familiar struggles, that's all it takes to shift your whole perspective. So we've got entanglement, the observer effect, uncertainty. What other quantum concepts does Fargo explore in the book? There's got to be more. Okay, so we've spent these last couple parts diving headfirst into this whole quantum physics thing and how it surprisingly kind of relates to our relationships, right? It's been a ride, hasn't it? We've gone from entangled emotions to intentionally observing and even that whole uncertainty thing. And let's not forget about the multiverse. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the multiverse. But now I'm thinking, how do we actually put all this quantum wisdom into practice, you know, like how do we take it from the theoretical to the like real life relationship stuff? And that's the million dollar question. Thankfully, Fargo doesn't leave us hanging. A big chunk of the book is all about practical application. She gives us actual tools and exercises to try out. Okay, now that's what I'm talking about. Metaphors are cool and all, but I'm always down for some new tools for the relationship toolkit. So spill it. What kind of exercises are we talking about? Well, she starts with mindful observation. Remember how we were saying our expectations can actually influence our partners? So she suggests this thing called a perception shift journal. Hold on. Perception shift. I've heard of gratitude journals, but this is a new one. What's that about? Basically, you pick a set time, maybe a week, and you consciously focus on the positive stuff in your relationship. Every day you write down what you noticed, how it made you feel, and how it changed your interactions with your partner. So instead of fixating on the negative, you're basically retraining your brain to see the good stuff. And that creates like a ripple effect. Exactly. And it's not just about ignoring problems. It's more like choosing where you focus your energy, which can actually shift the whole dynamic. OK, I can get behind that. Yeah. What else does she have up her sleeve? Well, remember, we were talking about that daily entanglement moment. Oh, yeah. That's the one where you and your partner sync up at a certain time, even if you're miles apart. That's the one. It's super simple, but powerful. Just a few minutes each day to intentionally connect, whether it's a quick text or even just thinking about each other. 
love it. It's like a little relationship ritual, you know, a reminder that you're part of something bigger, even when you're not physically together. Exactly. And it only takes a few minutes, but those few minutes, they can make all the difference. Okay. Those are awesome. But what about those really tricky relationship things, like that whole finding the balance between closeness and freedom thing we were talking about? Does she have anything for that? Funny you should mention that. Fargo has this exercise she calls the space-time relationship log, and it's all about that. Space-time relationship log. <gasps> okay, you're going to have to break this one down for me. It's not as complicated as it sounds, I promise. You just track how you spend your time for a week. Note down how many hours you spend connecting with your partner versus how many hours you're doing your own thing. So it's like a budget, but for your time and attention, you make sure both people are getting their needs met, both together and individually. Exactly. It helps you actually see the balance or maybe the imbalance in your relationship. Sometimes just seeing it written down can be a real eye opener. OK, that's actually brilliant. Like they say, what gets measured gets managed. Right. And for those like seemingly impossible relationship hurdles, you know, those communication breakdowns or the walls we put up. Fargo suggests something called the barrier mapping exercise. Barrier mapping. Okay, I'm already picturing a literal map of my relationship, complete with, like, danger zones and detours. Well, it's not quite that literal, but it is a visualization thing. You and your partner, you each draw a line, and that line represents the energy of your relationship. Then, any hills on that line, those are your barriers, and you label each one with the specific issue it represents. Okay, so if communication is a big challenge, are we talking about climbing Mount Miscommunication? Something like that. The important part is, once you've identified those barriers, you can start brainstorming ways to tunnel through them. So it's not just about identifying the problems, it's about finding solutions together. Right. You come up with small, concrete actions you can take. Maybe it's committing to active listening or scheduling regular check-ins. Just those consistent little things that can make a big difference over time. I love that. It's like she's giving us a whole new framework for thinking about relationships and those inevitable challenges. Mm, exactly. It's not about avoiding the tough stuff, but having the tools and honestly, the courage to face them head on. And what about that whole many worlds interpretation? The idea that every decision creates a split in the universe. Like there are all these parallel realities out there. Ah, <gasps> the multiverse. I knew you wouldn't let me forget about that one. How could I? It's too good. But seriously, how does that one tie into relationships? Well, Fargo suggests using it as a tool for self-reflection and kind of letting go of regrets. She calls it the parallel reality journal. Each day, you write about how your day might have gone if you'd made a different choice in your relationship. It's like you're exploring all those alternate timelines, but on paper. Like a choose-your-own-adventure, but for your love life. Right, and it's not about getting stuck in the what-ifs. It's more about appreciating the path you did choose and understanding how each decision, big or small, shapes where you end up. I love that. It's like we all have these incredible stories playing out in our relationships, and sometimes we just need a new lens to see them, you know? Exactly. And that's what Fargo's book really offers a new lens, the way to see those familiar patterns and challenges in a whole new light. It's like she took the most complex rule book in the universe, quantum physics, and she found a way to make it relevant to our messy, beautiful, sometimes confusing love lives. And you know, maybe, just maybe, love is just as complex and mysterious as quantum physics, just waiting for us to unlock its secrets. What a thought. This is why we love a good deep dive, wouldn't you say? You never know what you're going to uncover until you start digging deeper.